Hi, I'm Mike Blusive, and this is the TwinSync Studio demo slash tutorial. So TwinSync Studio is an application for highly customized exports from places like the iTwin platform and Synchro 4D and Synchro Control to places like Unreal Engine through their Datasmith pipeline. So really, there's only one current export pipeline implemented, and that is from iTwin, including Synchro Data and other connections from iTwin, into Unreal Engine. And it's ready enough to be of some use. So I want to release a demo out here. You should, there will be a link to this video in the description, sorry, in the description of the video, there'll be a link to this uh, document, but uh, you can just request a demo here and it's going to uh, just, you're gonna get, an, you're gonna submit an email, you'll get an email and the email will just give you an access key and a download link. So it's free. So yeah, at this point, you should have hopefully gotten the uh, demo to follow along. So let's uh, open it up. I already have it. So here's the setup. You might get a blue screen from Windows saying that uh, this is unsigned software. It totally is unsigned software. I haven't gone around to that part yet, but uh, you can ask me if you have more questions. I'm gonna be including a uh, MD5 checksum if you want to uh, to know more about, uh, or to be sure that what you downloaded is what I'm giving. So anyway, uh, it's gonna bring up registration. So yep, I have my own access key. Uh, it only works for a certain amount of machines, so you can't use this access key, but I'm gonna submit it. You're gonna have an access key in your email if you're doing the demo. But that said, here it opens up. This is highly based on the iTwin desktop starter template that is provided by iTwin. Uh, it's just so that you, there's an exporter without the view, but most people wanna be able to see what they're doing. So here's the viewer. And then you can view iTwins that should include like your synchro control synchronized stuff. So I have mine, I'm just gonna open it up. Now I've already, uh, well, I opened my iTwin and here's my iModel. I've already downloaded this one, but you would probably choose a place for it and then it would open up here. But here we go, uh, let me zoom in. Let me turn on uh, fast and show you guys what we're gonna be putting into Unreal Engine. So here's the animation where it's just building this building here. And then it's gonna do some landscaping. Great, cool. So. Whoops. So what we have here is a the customization pipeline, which I'm not really going to be focusing on. I'm going to be focusing on sort of the one-click export experience. But what you really are saying here is for each instance of geometry in the iTwin, do this. And what it's saying is do or send it to this datasmith file. So I'm just going to rename that. It doesn't really matter, but this is sort of how you name the datasmith file. You can have multiple datasmith files. Really, you're exporting to a folder, which can have multiple datasmith files. So We've seen what we got, so we're just gonna go to the export. So yeah, we're gonna hit install plugin first because in order to do the combined mesh, which is what I'm gonna be doing here, we actually want to, oops, is that? Yeah, that is the correct one. So we need to install a plugin to drive that animation, the more efficient animation. So I'm just, you basically just gotta find your U project. In my case, it already found it for me. So I'm gonna hit open. And it's gonna add a plugins directory. So now when I try to open this project, there's now a plugins directory. Uh, I have to rebuild. So you're going to have to wait here for a little bit. I have to rebuild because the version I'm currently using doesn't actually ship binaries for you. So if you're putting a new project, it's going to build those for you. And it actually takes a little bit just because compiling takes some time. But yeah, I'm going to wait for that here. Uh, so let me just delete this floor here. I'm just going to do some things that make things slightly easier for us. I'm going to make the exposure speed a lot faster because otherwise it's going to take like 10 seconds for our for our camera to understand that the scene has started because the light is too powerful. And now I'm going to import this data from the file that I made. So I'm just going to do file import. I think it knows where I, nope, it doesn't. Okay, cool. So I, did I even export it? No. <laughs> okay. And then I'm going to remove this .u data smith on it. Uh, it's not necessary because the data smith files are actually going to be inside. This is really the folder that you're creating. So I need to change that from uh, saying u data smith. And it's also gonna say 0% complete because I have not actually implemented progress <laughs> for this progress bar. But yeah, it finishes pretty quickly anyway. So now when we go back to Unreal, it's gonna be available there. Now, the default was to I to win Unreal exports. So this is what I just did. It's named output like I changed the, the um, uh, string for in the visual script. So I'm just gonna import it to content. Okay, so uh, it is currently building that giant mesh, preparing it. 
Okay, so here we are. We have our scene. It looks just like the one in iTwin, and we want to animate it. So what we're going to do is we're going to open the animations and we're going to pull out the uh, we're going to pull out this animation, drop it into our scene, and then we're going to go find our scheduled actor, which is the plugin controlled actor. So it's called a scheduled actor. I'm going to click on it, and I'm going to find its plugin specific schedule animation data, and I'm going to basically mark the associated sequence to be the one that we just spawned. So now when the sequence changes its position, it's going to change the position of this schedule. And the schedule will be able to tell you if the end, the associated sequence is like halfway through, it'll be able to tell you what date the schedule's at. So let's uh, turn on autoplay. And I'm also going to make it twice as fast just because I want to. And then let's also print that date. So if I go to the schedule actor again, I'm just going to select it. So that way when I open the level blueprint, I'm going to right click and I can now create a reference to the actor that I had selected from the level. And I'm going to schedule and I'm going to do get schedule current date time. And then we're just going to print that. Now dates can't actually be, well, I don't remember how to directly print them. So I've included a handy function, at least just for testing purposes in the plugin, which is going to be format date time, which is going to give you a string from it anyway. Okay. So we have that. So the last thing I want to do is set this to a Duration 0.01, so that way it's there's only one message on screen, not a bunch, because this is occurring every frame, every tick of the engine. Okay, so now when I hit play, let me actually move my player start out a little bit, just so that we can see more when we start. I hit play, here we go. Okay, there, so things are building. There was a cutting plane animation there with a very quick uh, object moving. There we go, it's building stuff. And Things are going to start filling out. You can also see in the top left, that's the exact schedule. Okay, um, it's going to do the landscaping soon. All right, there we go. Uh, good enough. So yeah, that's it. And it's being driven entirely by the level sequence. So if you want to uh, move the schedule in a certain way, or like, you know, if you want to scrub through the schedule, all you have to do is use Unreal Engine's existing APIs for managing the level sequence. So if you manage the level sequence, then you have just changed where the schedule is. Uh, and you can set up a UI for that and everything. So yeah, then the last thing that I want to share is just uh, support for materials, because even if you're doing this combined mesh that you know is more performant, you can still actually have good looking materials. So if I, I see that I don't actually have the starter content from Unreal, so I'm gonna to go to import, add feature content pack, and I'm going to include the starter content, and that'll give me some materials to work with here. Okay, for, I guess that's done. So I'm going to go to materials and I'm going to see some glass here. So we're going to add some fancy glass. So there we go. Uh, I just dragged and dropped it, which is really convenient because the material slots are kind of difficult to understand otherwise. Uh, in the future, the visual script will allow you to sort of pick and choose which materials to reassign things. But right now, materials are grouped by whatever they were inside of iTwin. So all the glass is glass. Now, what I want to do, though, is if we were to play this directly, we would actually see that the glass is no longer following that special shader-driven animation. So what we want to do instead is we want to actually edit this glass material to include that data. So what I want to do is add a material function call. And I'm going to make it use the item schedule animation because we're using an item export here. And now all we got to do is set the opacity here. But I want to blend it with the original glass opacity. So if you don't know anything about materials, that's okay. In this case, blending this kind of stuff is just using a multiply. So we're going to set that as the opacity. And uh, technically, you might need to fix the refraction. But the other thing they have to fix is those shadows that we saw. You want to disable shadows because zero translucence, translucency shouldn't be casting shadows. But it does for some reason. So we're just going to fix that by not casting shadows from this thing. So now when I hit play, we should now have no shadows and even better. Um, yeah, okay, there's the refraction. If you look carefully, you might see that the refraction is still visible. You want to, you would want to uh, check when the opacity is zero in the shader and set your refraction to one, I believe. But here you can see that the glass is now actually created correctly. And it would use all the same visibility stuff from the actual animation, like cutting planes and etc. So you could have like growing glass or whatever you wanted. So yeah, that is the material. And you can obviously change the rest of the materials too. Uh, I don't think the UVs are great here, but you could put, you know, grass material here. You might want to switch which UVs you're using. 
Uh, it's also taking some time to prepare that shader, but yeah, okay, cool. It did not require um, it did not require us to switch the uh, the UV channel, but you can use like you know beautiful and glass and grass, sorry, grass <laughs> um, or glass, whichever you want. Uh, yeah, so that is the current state of this thing for the demo.